Hey everyone, this is Jeff Nankowski and welcome back to the Maverick Statistics channel. In the last videos we were learning how to compute variances and standard deviations and now that we know how to do that, we'll be able to use them in more complex formulas and really gain some deep intel about what's happening inside of a data set. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the Chebyshev theorem next and we're going to bring up some Chebyshev stuff on our screen here. And when it comes to Chebyshev, the first two things that we need to know are, number one, the great thing about it is it works on any data set that you come across. So you don't have to worry about checking a data set to see, you know, is it bell-shaped, is it skewed, is it uniform? The theorem is always going to work. And the second piece is that you only need two key ingredients to make Chebyshev work. You just need to know the average and the standard deviation of a data set. So having said all that, what's the Chebyshev theorem really trying to do, like on a conceptual scale? Now here's the answer. When Chebyshev made the theorem, he basically took a histogram and he said, inside of the histogram, I'm gonna identify where the average of the data set is. And he figured that out, which is uh, right here. And once he knew the average, he said, let's travel above the average. We'll go two standard deviations above the average and we'll go two standard deviations below the average. Now, once he did that, he was able to figure out that in that range, he would find at least 75% of the data in the data set. So at least 75% of the observations would be in between two standard deviations at distance from the mean on the high side and the low side. Now, once he had that figured out, it wasn't good enough for him. He said, well, if that's what happens when I go two standard deviations above and below, what would happen if I go three standard deviations above and below the mean? Now, intuitively, if we go further away from the mean on the high side and the low side, we would end up with a bigger range. It would be wider, so there should be more observations in it. And he figured out that there would be at least this time 88.89% of the data inside of that range. Now, the big question for us is how on earth did he know this? And here's how he figured it out. He came up with a two-part formula. The first is a proportion that reads if we do 1 minus 1 over k squared, where k is equal to the number of standard deviations we're traveling above and below the average, we'll get some kind of a value, a decimal that we can interpret as a percentage. And that's gonna tell us what percentage of data we find in that range. So we're gonna go and say where k equals the number of standard deviations. Standard deviations. And we're just gonna go ahead and abbreviate here. So if we wanna travel three standard deviations above and below the mean, we would plug the three in here where K is, and then the formula is gonna end up giving us about 0.8889. It's gonna let us know that if you travel three standard deviations above and below that mean, expect to find just about 89% of the data at least inside of that range. So, if we want to get the actual numbers, how do we do that? Like what's the number on the high side of the mean? What's the number on the low side of the mean? We have part two of this theorem. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if we take X bar minus KS, that's gonna give us the low number on the range. And to get the number on the high side, we're gonna take X bar plus KS. And we're gonna put down that that's the number on the high side. So just to recap, when we plug in our X and our K and our S, we're gonna get a low number and a high number. Now in between those two numbers, we're gonna find this minimum percentage of data in that range. So I hope this has been helpful to you. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a look at an actual example so we know how we can start to work the Chebyshev theorem and interpret the answers. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you on the next video.